Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series for Heroes of Mice and Magic 3. In this series, we will be following the barbarian adventures of the immortal hero, Tarnum. Before he became the immortal hero, for years, no one could stop his reign of terror. But all things must come to an end. Upon his death, he entered the legendary Hall of Judgment to stand before the ancient council. There, the ancestors found him unworthy of entering paradise, so they cast him back among the mortals where... Ah, but I get ahead of myself. You wanted to know how he became king. Alrighty, folks, hello and welcome to my Heroes Chronicles campaign playthrough on Impossible Difficulty. Now, Heroes Chronicles is a spin-off series of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Um, it bridges the gap from a story perspective between Heroes 3 and Heroes 4. Um, there are eight chapters in total. Um, obviously, we're starting with Chapter 1, which is Warlords of the Wasteland. Um, now, it is worth pointing out that I will be using the Heroes Chronicles HD Plus mod for the entire series. Um, and with that in mind, let's get this series started. And let's go. Sir, you say you are a historian, a noble pursuit. I must admit, I was surprised when I received your message. I was even more stunned that you know my secret. Although some details are missing, your account of my long life is quite thorough. Perhaps someday we can meet and you can explain how you accomplished such a task. And yes, there is a hole in your records. My first reaction was to tear up your letter. That is a period of my life I would rather not conjure up again. But a few days later I realised if there is ever a lesson or moral to be learned from my existence, it can be found in that dark time before I became the immortal hero. Too often beginnings are filled with pain and sorrow. My story is no exception. So I've agreed to help you on one condition. Leave nothing out and change nothing, especially if it makes me look better. My story should be told as is, or not at all. Tarnum, the immortal hero. Warlords of the Wasteland. Before Tarnum became the immortal hero, he was a barbarian who threw off the shackles of his wizard masters and returned his people to their former greatness. This is his tale, and his downfall. Scenario 1, a barbarian king. Tarnum must defeat the present lord of the clans, Rabak, so he can name himself king of the barbarians. Everyone is limited to level 6, and Tarnum's strongest captain will follow him to the next map. Alright. Impossible difficulty, we either start with basic leadership or 15 goblins, I'm going to go with leadership. Let's do this. Knowing where it all began will help you understand Tarnum, the choices he made, and the reason the ancestors gave him a second chance. His people suffered generations of enslavement from Brakadun and their henchmen, men like the brutal Rabat. An old man staggers up to you, frightening off some of your sheep, and stumbles right into your arms. That's when you notice an arrow in the elder's back. He's weak from loss of blood, but when he clutches your hand, you can't pull away. He tells you he's a bard, one of the last of his kind. It's hard to believe considering your people's oral historians were outlawed by the Empire of Bracadoon long ago, because their heroic tales often spurred the barbarian clans into rebellion. Before his death, the bard gathers his strength to tell you his last story. A true history of your people that the wizard kings have tried to hide. Your people weren't always the slaves of the Empire of Bracadoon. Long ago, one of the ancestors of your own clan, a great warrior named Jarg, formed a massive horde and conquered all of the lands, from ocean to ocean, including Bracadoon. Your heart begins to race as you hear the tale. It's like the games you used to play when you were a kid. Hiding out here in the wilderness, away from prying eyes, with a stick for a sword you stood up to the evil wizards. But when you grew up, you dismissed those games as a child's fantasy. But it happened. It really happened. And as you picture your present clan leaders, 
You can't imagine any of those drunken, pot-bellied fools leading an army, much less winning a battle. What happened to your people's courage? Alrighty, what have we got in here? Absolutely nothing wonderful. Need to get ourselves some money and resources, actually. Yeah, let's see if we can take this fight. Why not? Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a pretty good trade, all things considered. Grab the ore. Uh, I guess we'll take that fight. Ooh, baby. Ooh, lovely it is. <laughs> build ourselves a marketplace. We need to build ourselves a town hall ASAP Rocky. The effects seem a bit loud. I'm going to turn them down a smidge. I think that's better. Okay, grab ourselves a town hall. You thought your people would be as excited about Jarg's victories as you were, but the chief of your clan just laughs at the tale of Jarg and his mighty horde. A child's tale, he calls it, told by a child. Your blood boils as the other men join in his laughter. It's not a fantasy, it's real. What do you know, you fat goblin, you shout. Your words can't be taken back, but neither do you want to. Even knowing that the other man is larger and more experienced than you, you still don't back down as the chief challenges you to a duel. Jarg wouldn't back down. And like Jarg, you find a way to win despite the odds, using your speed and a strength fueled by rage you never knew you possessed. Stunned, the warriors of your clan declare their loyalty to you, their new chief. Okay, well, leadership it is. Leadership is good for this uh, this faction, so we'll take that. One of your captains mentioned that you'll need plenty of gold if you're going to recruit an army. One easy way to obtain gold is to take it from the treasure chest instead of distributing it to the people. Another is to search out gold mines, such as the one to the south. Good to know. Right, blacksmith. As you eat with the other soldiers, one of them mentions that he just came from the tavern, where he saw some mercenaries who might be willing to join your cause. For the right price, of course. Collect all resources, my chief, says one of your advisors. An army requires a lot of maintenance. It might even be wise to hire another hero just to collect resources and troops while you explore. Not a bad shout, but we do want orcs. Word of your victories is spreading like wildfire. And as your scouts return from every corner of your homeland, you learn that the other clans remain quiet and neutral. They neither support you nor speak against you except for one. The current Lord of the Clans, Rabak, was appointed by the Wizards as a spokesperson for your people. But you've never heard Rabak say a bad word about Brakadoon. He sits in his stronghold eating a feast each night, while you recall many nights when your family went hungry because you had to clear out your stores to pay the taxes. Rabak won't sit idle while you anger the Wizards. You're certain the two of you will soon meet, and not as friends. Ah, hell yeah, Jimmy. We'll wait one more turn. Main reason I want a spell book. Ooh, slow. We'll take slow. Ah, nice. That is worth all the uh, all the waiting. Uh, no, we don't really want to fight these guys. I think we'll go for a. Wolf pen. What do you know of our history? You ask the older warrior sitting across from you at dinner. You've been asking your elders what they know of barbarian history, hoping that someone could tell you more about the past glories of your people. But you've found their knowledge lacking. Most haven't even heard the name of Yarg. The warrior looks up from his meal and shrugs. As much as anyone, my grandfather said we used to be a great nation, the greatest, but he didn't have all his wits. Maybe it's true, but no more. Everything falls, I guess. Even a great oak, a thousand years old, will fall one day. You're impressed with the man's honest response, but annoyed that this veteran couldn't tell you more. How do you know who you are if you don't know where you've come from? 
Is that why the wizards outlawed the bards? You extend your hand and ask, what is your name? Hardak, answers the warrior. You know, it's actually quite impressive just how much text and how much lore there is to this game. I never realised Heroes Chronicles was so um, heavy in lore. Sitting alone last night, you pondered the tragic loss of your people's history. You haven't been able to find a single person who knows the tale of Yarg and his horde. Some pretending to be wise made up some ridiculous story instead of admitting ignorance. Then a solution comes to mind. You tell your people to pass the word that you are looking for bards. Any who are brave enough to step from hiding will be under your protection. If your people are ever going to reclaim their courage, they need to rediscover their identity. And only the bards hold those secrets. First things first, we need a city hall. I was rather hoping they would join me, but never mind. I'm not going to do the witch's hurt, no idea what we'll get. That's a good win. Yeah, I have to take up the over Madge. Okay, that's a big fight. Your name is on everyone's lips these days. Some say you're a troublemaker that is going to bring down the wrath of Bracadoon. Others wait to see if you have the strength to back up your words of conquest. You've heard that many secretly cheer you on, but there is still one obstacle in your way. Rabak, the Lord of the Clans. So it's just me and one other. I think we need to wait at least one more week before we uh, start targeting our enemies. Wait two more days. Oof. Not great, not terrible. Ah, I knew you'd be coming. Dreamed about a handsome warrior coming to my door. Yes, I did. How would you like a sturdy weapon at your side? I'll give you one. But first, you need to bring me 50 wolf riders to protect my home from the raiders that have been moving through these parts. You know, I really wish they would actually tell you what artifact you're going to get for trading. Out of the shadowed treetops brings a pack of obsidian gargoyles looking for blood. That's a pretty good trade. Ooh, tactics. Yes, please. Guess we'll get the Hall of Valhalla. During a moment of weakness, when you feel like no one but you cares about restoring the glory of your people, your father sneaks into camp late one night with a group of farmers and cattlemen. They say that they're impressed with your success thus far, but like many they have families to take care of and can't pick up a sword like they wish. Instead they offer you a gift, the result of a collection taken up by your secret supporters. This is the best we can do, they say. It's a start, at least. Nice, take that. Cheeky little freebie. Like a trolls though, that's not ideal. Eh, we could probably do better. Okay, 
Let me slow this one down. Nice. Well, he can't get to uh, neither can I. Mm. Really good trade, all things considered. Uh, let's get a tavern. Should probably get a castle too. Two in one left. It's interesting. I can't build a city hall or a match level one. Okay, good to know. Ghost dragons, eh? Yeah, well, he's not a very strong hero in terms of his uh, stats, at least. He's probably just hiding away. Let's grab... Let's start upgrading some stuff. One of your captains informs you that a messenger from Clan Norabak has just arrived. What could the man possibly have to say? He's certainly not going to join your cause. Probably some empty threat. Tell the messenger, you say, that unless he's bringing me Rabak's unconditional surrender, then I'll see the Clan Lord on the battlefield. Now we should be able to take on these Ogre Mag. Nope, that'll do. Maybe we slow this one down. Feels bad, I only have one spell power. Oof. This is going to hurt a lot. Uh, surprisingly, not as much as I thought it was. I mean, it still hurt, but... Oh, I should go armorer. I think that would be a good little win for us. Inspired by the boldness of your reply to Rabak's ultimatum, several bands of creatures come out of the wilderness hoping to join your army. Nice. Level am I? Five. I like that it actually tells you the, quant the actual numbers now, that's actually really useful. Even if they are just an estimate, it's uh, definitely a positive. I think that might be him. I wonder if we just go and try and give him a slap. A feral looking man is brought before you. He looks like he's been hiding in the wild for a long time, and he hasn't been eating well either, as his protruding ribs indicate. The soldier who brought in the man says he was lurking just outside the camp. Who are you? You ask. I am a bard, my king. I'm not a king. Not from what I hear. But word is you will protect us bards from the lore of the wizard kings in exchange for our stories. You heard right, you say, barely able to sit still. 
So the old bard who died in your arms wasn't the last one. Your people's history is not lost. Ah, capital, lovely, jovely. Now we got some income. Wow, we just broke through that. That's Rabak. That's uh, not that big an army, actually. To be fair, even if he does capture my base, I'm not too worried. As you remove your armor after a long march, a shape jumps from the darkness, swinging the gleaming blade. You dodge and club the assassin to the ground with your bare fists. Later, when your troops drag the thug away, you say, Assassin, Rabak has learned the ways of the wizard kings too well. Now I know I'm on the right path. Right, there's a lot of Cyclops kings to get through. Hopefully he takes that battle, because that's not going to go too well for him, surely. Wait, what? Did he just take on that fight and not lose any troops? Surely not. At least he can't escape. That might have worked out really well for us. Uh, unless he built an escape tunnel. I don't think he would have done. That guy's got no spell power. Or mag or spell points. So this should be a straightforward victory, boys. Not seeing much they can do to uh, stop us at this point. Oh, boom! Yeah, okay, I'll lose a few troops, but you know, victories like this don't come up without a cost. Um. Easy, bruv. Ooh, nice. Logistics is huge. All of Valhalla would we'll definitely take that. Yeah, we should. This should be plain sailing from here on out, boys. We're already max level. An ornate arch stands before you, sparkling with magic. You've heard the Wizard King sometimes use these to travel great distances in a single step. Although you distrust magic, a little light show isn't going to frighten you from your path. Over the past few days, three more bards have come out of hiding, but they bring sad news. They are the last. You shudder to think of just how close your people came to losing the history that is locked within the minds of these four men. If not for their courage and determination to keep the old ways alive, you realise the barbarians would have simply become the lapdogs of the wizard kings. You immediately order each bard to take two apprentices so that their knowledge will not be lost if they should die. And teach them quickly, you say. For the next year, you should take two more apprentices, and so on. These lands belong to Rabak and his clan. By barbarian standards, they are rich in resources. Some say because Rabak is such a good friends with the wizards. the end of the week as well. Lovely. I'll just nab your base. It's a fully defended base, but we should be absolutely fine here. Nice small map to start us off, boys. I'm going to slow you. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take that fight. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ooh, another one of those. Lovely jovely. Summon boat, magic arrow, which we've already got. I might get a match level two though. Oh. Lightning bolt, nice. So there is someone else lurking around somewhere. Ah, there he is. You sit with the four bards one night, listening to their accounts of Yarg and how he conquered every land between the two oceans. His heroic deeds were numerous. Yarg lived so long ago, you say. What are the barbarian kings that came after him? The bards exchanged a knowing glance, and then the eldest says, Yarg was the last. He ruled well into his old age, but when he died, his kingdoms crumpled. His sons fought each other for control and ended up too weak to stand up to the wizards who formed a Barakadun. Yarg was the last, you say, amazed? No, says the elder bard, there must be another. Only a king can bring the people together. Only a king can throw off this yoke the wizards have placed upon us. It takes you a moment to realise they are talking about you. Alright, so this must be their last hero. <laughs> oh wow oh wow that's hilarious ha <laughs> ha we got Rebecca. that's amazing what are the chances wow that is too poetic he realised he can't can't beat us, so he joined us. GG's boys, GG's. Congratulations, all your enemies have been defeated, and victory is yours. War one. All right, scenario two: the criminal king. The wizard kings have declared Tarnum a criminal, and three towers are raising forces to capture him. Tarnum must defeat all enemy towns, all heroes are limited to 11th level, and Tarnum's strongest captain will accompany him to the next level. I'm gonna go with 10 wolf riders, let's do this. Upon defeating Rabak, Tarnum named himself King of the Barbarians, a title not held by one of his people since Brakadun conquered their lands. But in the eyes of the wizard kings, he was just a rebel fly to be squashed. You've managed to place some troops in an old garrison to keep your land safe for the moment. You won't be able to use the troops yourself, but don't wait too long to take the fight to your enemies. No garrison is impervious forever. Oh, this is him. Right, I see. I love how we actually nabbed Rabak. That is too poetic. I think we're going to take that fight. So I think we're going to be a little bit more strategic in our approach on this particular campaign, just in terms of um, maybe spending less time running around aimlessly and uh, more going direct to the point. Search out the hut of the Magi, my king, claims one of your advisors. The Magi will allow you to spy on the movements of your enemy, so you'll never be surprised. No, we don't need to lose that. Easy, bruv. Ooh, 
Rock caves. Nice. We definitely want rocks. ASAP Rocky. <laughs> uh, match level 1. Start things off. Ah, blue's right there. Okay, that's very close. We are on the defensive now, my lord, says your favoured advisor and friend Hardak. You should visit the Marletto Tower nearby and learn some of the defensive tactics they can provide. Oh yeah, already done that. Okay. In fact, let's go ahead and grab these bad boys. 20 gremlins we can definitely take care of. Let's grab our uh, mana back though. Get you into the Marletto Tower. What level are we allowed to go up to? 11th. Okay, so that's uh, five levels. That's not too bad, I suppose. Oh, let's grab a city hall. We need that. Uh, Wolf Raiders. That's a tough fight. That's just that. We should get the rocks, though. Can we deal with nine rocks? Yeah, might struggle. Ooh. I know things can get hectic when you're fighting for your life, jokes Hardak over dinner, but don't forget to visit the water wheel every week. This army is like a locust when it comes to resources, and we'll be needing all the gold we can get. Solmaya, oh no, that is not the hero I want them to have. Chain lightning, <laughs> That is a savage spell to be up against. Hmm. I wonder if we get some wolf riders. We need to be very strategic about this. As always, you need gold to build your army. Some of the elder natives of this region claim there is a lost gold mine nearby in a hidden valley. Unfortunately, none of them can point the way to this wealth, so you order your troops to keep an eye open. That'd be through there, I should imagine, that monolith. Okay. So if we grab that on him. Let's see if we can take out... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do we risk it? Hmm... Oh, actually, you know what? We should put... Nah, we're good. Let's wait, wait. Wait. Attack. Eight movement, we got nine. <laughs> okay. That's an interesting move. But they can fly, that's the problem. Oh no, I mistimed that. Shoot. That was a big mistake. Big mistake. Okay, we're going to lose all of our gobs. But we haven't got a choice. That was a that was a rookie. That was a rookie. Legs of Legion gives what? Second units, second level units, nice. We can deal with 10 to 19 swordsmen. Uh, 
Ouch. I hope that takes us to a gold mine. Oh, of course it's defended. It's a lot of Thunderbirds. quite funny. Oh my sweet Jesus. This must be the hidden valley the bards talked about. Yeah, yeah. That should be a lot of uh, wyverns too. And luckily goblins really are our fodder but it's not great losing them all, I'm gonna lie. You do need more than one spell power. Ooh, do we go diplomacy? Now diplomacy is an interesting... Do you know what, I think I am. I like diplomacy as a skill. I think it's very powerful. It's a little bit more tricky on um, impossible difficulty, but... A message arrives tied to the leg of a red bird. It is no coincidence that the red bird is a symbol of death among your people. One of the bards opens it. To the savage who thinks he's king, surrender your forces now or your death will be slow and painful. In our interrogation chambers, the strong have been known to live for weeks. The sombre bard shakes his head and says, It's simply signed Brakadoon. You know the stories about the wizard torturers, and you don't doubt they are true. But as you look out at the faces of the men gathered waiting for your response, you can't show how you truly feel. Instead, you smile and take the red bird in hand. Slowly, you raise the avian to your lips and kiss the top of its head. I welcome the chance to be so close to these wizards, you boast. Then they will find out that the weak don't live long in my hands. I will say I do find it interesting how Brakadoon is so much more savage than what it becomes in Brakada in uh, sort of like the later years. Oh, and if these join as well, that would be amazing. Damn! That's really unfortunate. I was really, really hoping they would. <laughs> okay, castle. Oh, hello. So it begins. Oh, that's not that big an army, actually. In fact, I actually think we've got an army big enough to deal with these. Day five. I'm going to have to be quick though. We are going to have to be quick if we wanted to deal with them. Once again you must thank your bards for their knowledge. Once there was a barbarian woman from these parts who was to be married to an ogre. She carried her dowry with her to the hut of the ogre, but when the giant stepped outside she picked up his wood axe and lopped off the ogre's head. It is said she hid a dowry in a nearby cave and lived the rest of her life alone in the intended's home. Using the directions from the old tale, the bards found a secret cache of resources buried in a cave in the mountains. Noice. Oh, we've got enough for a capital. Um, I do wonder whether before we get a capital, though, we might want to just grab some of these. Several Nagas we can deal with. Uh, I think we can deal with that. 
Ambush. From the bushes spring your enemy, intent on killing you, but your troops respond quickly. With the sound of bones of your people crunching beneath their feet still fresh in their ears, they respond quickly and fiercely. Don't forget to recruit the troops from the places such as Goblin Barracks each week, says Hardak the advisor. The more the mightier. Okay, well she's left herself completely. I don't know how many's in here, that's the only problem troops wise. Um Okay. How much room does that give me? Plenty as it happens. Okay, that's not much at all. Ooh, artillery, yes. I do want one thing of magic, though. That would be great. Okay, that's a very good trade. And a free tower. Lovely, Javli. I'd like haste. So, air would be perfect. If we had to, if we had to pick one thing... Air would be my choice. Or Earth. But Earth, I feel like... Yeah, Earth is just as good, to be fair. Oh, we can't build a capital there. Good to know. We already got... Oh, because we've got one here. Nice. So that saves me 10 grand. Diplomat's ring, eh? level, lovely jovely. Traitors deserve no burial. Ooh, savage. Alright. I think I'd rather deal with Solmaya to be honest. Like early on before he gets too strong. Could get level two. We need sulfur. Ah, I didn't pick up the sulfur mine, did I? Fulgra, one of the most experienced soldiers among your captains, advise you to consolidate your troops under your own leadership. That way, they can protect you from the treacherous wizards and you'll be able to attack using the strength in numbers, as well as strength of will. Alright, this is a small map, so we need to kind of push our advantage ASAP Rocky, really. But the fact that we caught, captured their capital straight off the back is a really good... Sign. Oh, we should definitely grab Ballista since that is now our a thing. And we should grab some rocks from there. Be nice if they would have joined, but never mind. Okay, cool. So now we know exactly what we're dealing with and everything. So there's a two-way portal there with Piquardium, not too fast. I need to deal with Solmire. Solmire is the big problem. Nice. That's huge. Properly huge. Uh, Madge level 2, what would we get? Ice Bolt, eh. Not terror, not, not, mm. I mean, it is good, but I'm not too fussed about that one. On a hunting excursion, you prove your strength by single handedly slaying a behemoth. To your surprise, you discover that the behemoth had a group of hunters trapped in a nearby cave and was waiting for them to come out. You've saved our lives, they say. 
They're hungry and weak, so you tell them to go to your barracks, where they will find food, and in return for saving them, they can join your army. Ooh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, we've already got maxed out on that. Don't need this. Several. Five to nine. Yeah, let's deal with that. Uh, I think we can be more cost effective than that. So we actually have four spell power now, so we can actually slow effectively. Oh, and they've gone the long way. Nice. More free shots for me. Oh, 24. That's a lot of rocks. Still, seven Bayer Moss is still a considerable number. It's no joke. Wow, God, that moved a lot. I feel like that could probably kill with Bless. Nice. Just want to check what that would be. Ballistics, yeah, not fussed about that. Uh, kind of scared him, spooked him now, aren't I? Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Unbelievable, we shouldn't have done that. Oh, so they're all linked. Nice. A lone bloody goblin returns from a scouting mission with horrible news. Forgra, your most experienced captain, was ambushed by a wizard. Only the goblin escaped, and he recounts how the enemy brutally executed Forgra on the spot. Forgra wasn't even given the chance to defend himself. What a horrible death, trapped by magic and unable to defend yourself. These wizards have no sense of fairness or honour. You grip your fist around the hilt of your sword, wishing one of the spellcasters was within reach of you right now. If only you could strike back at these cowards. Kind of can. 249. No, we can do better. And to be fair, I don't want to auto-combat every single fight. I feel like that's a uh, bit of a boring way to play. Um, let's target these. Nice. Do we have haste? Yeah, we do. Why are spells cheaper for us? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm not sure why spells cost less. double check what I've picked up that might allow for that. Be careful of the landmines. Beautiful. What would make our spells cost less, I wonder? Hmm. Genuinely do not know why that would be the case. Might not be able to get back. To be fair, as long as we kill their main heroes, I'm not too bothered about killing them off in one go. Uh, we definitely want Madge level 2. Got Ice Bolt anyway. Lovely jovely. Definitely put those on him. So we can reach both of them. Nice. The wizards created the teleporters to travel quickly through the wastelands, but you have found they can be used to your advantage as well. With them, you'll be able to strike at your enemy with the deadly speed of a rock viper. Okay, well, Soulmire is the big challenge because of chain lightning. I don't. He hasn't got enough spell points to actually cast it, which is quite funny. And convenient, dare I say. Oof. Nice. Ah. 
Hey, that she retreated, okay. This feels like an easy win. Beautiful. Can we actually get to uh, get some more spell power? That's it. GG's boys. GG. Um. I will fight it. Let's not. Um, let's not skip the battles, especially the last ones. Yeah, my spells are definitely cheaper, but I don't know why. Right, I just want a chest if there is a landmine. No landmines. Interesting. Why no landmines? Is this because it's using the Heroes 3 rule set? Restoration of Arathi and not um, Shadow of Death? So moats don't do damage, is what I'm seeing from this. That's good to know, because I assumed Chronicles would follow Shadow of Death, since they came out after Shadow of Death, but apparently not. Apparently they follow Restoration of Arathia rules and Siege regard. Blue has been vanquished. Congratulations, all your enemies have been defeated and victory is yours. Alright, Warlords 2. Scenario 3 Ultimatum. The evil wizard Curl has captured the last four bards and threatens to execute them in three months unless King Tarnum disbands all his forces and surrenders. Tarnum and all his heroes are limited to level 15 and Tarnum's two strongest heroes will carry over to the next map. Go one defense, let's do this. The bards possess the history and identity of the barbarian people, but after generations of oppression, only four still lived. Knowing the importance of these wise men, the wizard, Kuro, imprisoned them in his tower and held them for ransom. Tarnum's life in exchange for the bards. Kuro has chosen his fortress well. This rugged land is difficult to navigate and several important passes are blocked by impervious border guards. Find the key mass of tents of the same colour in order to pass and do it quickly. Curl's announcement that he is going to kill the bards in three months unless you disband your troops and surrender has nearly broken the confidence of your troops. For months you have been seeing how the bards and the history they hold in their tales is the secret to the freedom of the barbarian people. So what would happen if the bards died? If you don't free them in three months, you'll soon find out. Alright. Um, let's have a look. He's actually got a decent amount of troops. Got some money. Yes, nice. 500 gold anywhere? Lovely, lovely. All the money. Alright. Let's get a match level one. You shouldn't worry yourself over collecting resources and things, my king, says one of your captains. Time we don't have, so let another do that. You should concentrate on finding the key master tents to gain passage to Curl's Tower. Um, pack of rogues. Ooh, nice. That's good because we can see if people are going to fight us or not. Yeah, they're in the mood for a fight. That's no good for us. Hmm. 
Let's see if they're willing to join us or not. Time, of course, is in short supply, and there is a lot of ground to cover. Hardak advises you to find someone who can teach you and your captain's pathfinding, so everyone can pass quickly over this wasteland. Yeah, that's a point I do need pathfinding, actually. I guess magic is just not going to happen. They're willing to join us. Great. Uh, they're probably not. Blacksmith, yes. King Tarnum, says your advisor, Hardak. I met a man on the road with a fresh and fast horse. He says he got it from a stable to the south. We must visit this stable weekly if we are going to be able to rescue the bards before Curl's deadline runs out. It's a tiny map. Why would there be that much of a challenge? Hardak, your advisor, says it would be wise to visit the rally flag before any major battle. It always cheers the men and boils their blood for combat. We found the blue key mouse tent. No man will just run away. City Hall, yes. Right, so now I think we get Ballista Yards. Beautiful. Once again, good advice comes from Hardak. He suggests you train your captains well, even if all they're doing is picking up resources. It's always good to keep skilled leaders at your side, especially in the battles ahead. I don't disagree. Okay, let's look at the Orc Tower. Mood for a fight. Let's go down here. Um, we could do better than that, I think. Seven movement, they've got eight. Probably could have played that better. Never mind. Fear they're in the mood for a fight, eh? See if that changes the uh, outcome. Just run away now. Eh. Definitely fight us. There's also green. How fortunate, my king, says Hardak. He goes on to tell you that there is news from town of the discovery of a nest of rocks. A small boy got lost in the mountains, so the entire clan organised a search party. When they found the child, however, he was hiding safely in a rock's nest. It took some convincing to get the boy away from the motherly birds, 
but all is well. And with a small expense, the rocks could be tamed for your army. The ancestors are looking after you. Ooh, nice. That's awesome. They're going to fight us no matter what. Money really is killing me. Surely flee. Okay. Take that. Move for a fight. Yeah. Stand back, little man. This is Cyclops Gold. Not for your petty little war, shouts the Cyclops King who guards this mine. Bad little trade. Got a gold mine, which is worth it, and equestrian's gloves, which is huge. Uh, we get a cyclops cave. Got a castle. A spy comes to you with horrible news. Impatient or perhaps as a warning to you, Curl has gone back on his word and executed the eldest of the four bards. This is grave news, for the elder bard was the wisest of the storytellers, and now his knowledge is lost forever. This act only reconfirms the urgency of your quest and the evil nature of your enemy. That night you find it difficult to sleep as you wonder what tales of barbarian history are lost now that the elder bard is dead. In a way, you've already failed your people. A piece of them is gone forever. Getting off your bedroll, you come to your knees and grip your hands in the dry dirt. Between clenched teeth, you swear I will not fail again. Um, yeah, we need to really go towards capital. A scout brings you a notice that has appeared overnight on the door of every home in the region. It's from Curl. The arrogance of the so-called barbarian King Tarnum has caused the death of an innocent. Like a coward, he refused to turn himself in, and now a poor old man has died. Let this be a lesson about the true nature of this criminal who claims he is king. Now, I must ask, no, beg Tarnum to surrender and stop others from suffering as well. You crumple the paper up in your fist, but say nothing. You can't shake the feeling that in a small way, Curl is right. As you approach a magical idol of fortune, the ground surrounding it shimmers like a desert horizon. The bushes, trees and rocks become the troops of your enemy, an ambush. Yeah. This is acceptable losses. Um, Hall of Valhalla for sure. Curl's letter about the Elder Bard's death has struck to the core of your people's confidence in you. Many have stopped working and others have fled into the wilderness with valuable resources. There is nothing you can do about it except continue the fight. There's a thing, we are actually getting genuinely quite strong now. 
in terms of our army. They don't run away. I'd rather than join, but it is what it is. Today, some troops entered your town, willing to side with your army against Curl. They have a particular hatred of this wizard, and recount a tale of his atrocities in those barbarian lands Curl governs. Curl despises barbarians more than any wizard, although we don't know why. Whenever a crime is committed, he doesn't bother to investigate, he just throws the nearest barbarian in his dungeon, and no one stays in Curl's dungeon for long, at least they don't survive for long. You listen as they describe some of the tortures Curl uses. Shivers running down your spine, you realise you're dealing with the worst of the worst of the wizards. It really is interesting just how um, how much more brutal these wizards are than uh, what is modern day Ricarda. Like it almost feels surreal like we're dealing with two different factions. Like they're more, they're closer to necromancers than they are wizards interestingly hell or even warlocks all right so basic resistance is actually pretty good but i kind of want to get pathfinding so i'm gonna hold out hope that we find pathfinding somewhere in our journey what would also be really good is if i can get a hero that has ballista for future missions the soldiers ahead fly curls banner no doubt a unit left behind to protect something important. As you approach, they raise their halberds and prepare for battle. They will obviously fight to the last man, fearing the wizard more than your army. Poor oh, ancient behemoths. The murderous gleam in their eyes of these ancient behemoths tells you they are under some sort of spell. Obviously, Curl didn't want you to claim the gold, from the mine they protect. Okay, let's actually fight this one. I suspect we can do better. Uh, not having spells is unfortunate. Not having like a, a, any spell school. I would take either air or earth. I don't think it's going to happen, if I'm being completely honest. We should kill as many of these off as we can. Okay, that should be clean up on our uh, seven. to join us. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, yes! I do get one. Gurnison, my boy! I also get to see what's down here as well. Purely out of curiosity. This pathfinding, that would be amazing. Thirteen Behemoths. Oh, it is as well. Ooh, baby. Now, where does that actually take me? Oh, down there. Which is perfect, actually. 13, though. That's no joke of an army. Let's, uh, let's meet up with these. Doing. Let's let's move this around. This is gonna be a tough fight, so 
I'll lose more than is absolutely necessary. Let's actually move them there. Unfortunately, let's stick a bless on. I'll probably lose one of these, but yeah, no lightning bolt, sadly. Yeah, not great, not bad. So we've got red. Gurnison, move out the way. I'm concerned that rare this is this is gonna open up the floodgates to the enemy though. You're sitting around with your troops having your evening meal when an elderly, somewhat senile goblin says In case you haven't already realized, my king, it helps to visit the learning stones at least once. Everyone should. There is always much to be learned from them. I have to say I do like the uh, the writing in this game. Like, there's an element of humour and uh, also seriousness. I mean, granted, obviously, you know, I've been playing this game for years. It's like <laughs> a lot of the information is really, uh, really basic and terrible, but <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. We should definitely be visiting the Learning Stones. They're a, they're a valuable source of XP. So at least we've got um, Pathfinder and everyone now. That's awesome. Um, movement is king in uh, games like this. Might not even be an enemy down here to be fair, and it might not be till later. Can we build a bay muffler? No. Oh, okay, so my crystals are basically redundant anyway. One if I diddly do. Once again, the senile goblin who has named himself one of your advisors, he's worth a laugh at least, gives you a great piece of advice. Whenever you wander upon a mercenary camp, have all your heroes visit it, says the goblin. The training you receive there will benefit future battles. <laughs> sure, I'm actually going to have quite a bit of fun um, voice acting this goblin, I feel. <laughs> Uh, again, he's not wrong. But it is also like Heroes 101. <laughs> no. Wow, the movement on this guy. For entertainment, you pause here for a meal and wrestling. Everyone competes, including you. It's a difficult competition, but in the end, you come out victorious. Bring in the cheers of your men. It gives them the feeling that they're following the right man. Imagine if he lost. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. And bad. Alright, do we... I think we deal with that after. Okay, max level. For this mission at least.
A scout returns, having barely escaped the enemy with his life. Meking, he says, when he catches his breath, I found the purple key master's tent, but it's protected by giants. A formidable opponent for any army. You best make sure you can take them before you attack. And we've got Titans. Ah, hell, Jimmy. Oh, I didn't group them up. Whoops. Uh, that's not ideal. What's their movement seven? Oof. Well, we've got to deal with them, so. Nice. Yeah, not a pretty fight, but it is what it is. I only assume this takes me back to my base, hopefully. Beyond these guardians lies a gateway to your land that will save you days of travel, but these Naga queens must be defeated first. take that trade. Oh yeah, oops. Magic resistance, nice. Ah, it takes me there, nice. Okay. Let's get a level two since that's all the spells we can cast. Grab this and then uh, mosey on up here, see what's quacker lacking for the final area. Uh, can we see what we're dealing with? No. Great. Well, we're just going to have to wing it, boys. Pearl's land lies beyond this border guard. You'll certainly find him prepared for your arrival, but what choice do you have? I'm actually going to wait a turn before we uh, push through. He's weak. Nice. Now oh, there's Curl. He's got absolutely nothing. Wow, he's got absolutely nothing. Man, this guy is so weak. <laughs> Why is he a zero one three four for a main enemy hero? Um. Let's have a look. So we've got nine movement. We've got eleven. So let's haste. Hope you get another go. Yeah, yeah. Josephine, 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 I'm coming for you. Hope you don't mind. Your base is so beautiful, I can't believe you've left it so undefended for me. Oof, my poor, my poor Thunderbirds. You can bait them out of their base, would be nice. Oh, they do have... Um, things. Interesting. wonder why that didn't trigger before then. Okay, so we are using Heroes 3 Shadow of Death rules. That makes more sense. Honestly. Um, let's... Haste. We want to haste. Um... Actually, yeah, maybe we haste these guys. I don't care if they die. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. I did that shit on him. Uh, 
Cheese boys, cheese. Congratulations, you've captured Mistos and are victorious. Lovely. War three. Scenario four: the war for the Mudlands. To strengthen his armies, Tana must conquer his neighbours in the Mudlands, taking advantage of a civil war between the Lizardmen and the Gnolls to name himself their new king. Conquer all towns without losing Tarnum. All heroes are limited to level 18. Two heroes will follow Tarnum to the next map. Boots of Speed is better than 50 Norks. Let's go. Although the Wizard Kings ruled the Mudlands, not even they were able to completely control these muggy swamps. Then Tarnum dragged his armies through the mud with just one goal in mind. Join the forces of the Mudlands with his own so he could finally bring down the Empire of Bracadoon. As you and your captain strategize over a map of the Mudlands drawn in the sand, your wisest advisor Hardak scratches his beard. We know the Gnolls and Lizardmen are fighting each other for control. Civil wars are wicked and chaotic. Now's a good time to attack, but do it quickly, my king, before a new ruler is decided. Alright, so Gurnison gives me this, is why I wanted him. You're miles away. And split off. Let's just grab these guys. With all the Halhalla, why not? Probably a bit of a waste, but eh. Eight two, yeah, sure. Nah. Can't be losing forces unnecessarily. This is a medium sized map, it's a little bit bigger than the previous ones. Seek the seer's hut, said the wise woman standing outside your tent this morning. She could be some crazy old lady, but something about the way she disappeared when you glanced away gives you impression that you had better listen to her. Yeah, yeah. Diplomacy coming in clutch. As I knew it would. Probably the most underrated um, skill from my side. For, a very, for many, many years I've always underrated it. Now I see its power. I'm like, yeah, now it's good. It's very good. It's not just good, it's great. A pack of Cyclopses, that ain't gonna happen. Pack of Wolf Raiders, we can give that a whirl. Might get lucky, we definitely don't get lucky. Come on it. You know, I kind of miss not having the uh, rogues in my army now, telling me what the uh, enemy creatures are going to do. <laughs> Such a good little mechanic. The bards inform you that three border gates were built long ago to block passage between the Mudlands and your homeland. This is the only way between these two regions. 
If you gain control of them, you'll be able to pass into the Mudlands, yet feel confident that your enemy is incapable of attacking you. Nice. That does sound good, not gonna lie. Let's try for a Hobgoblins first. Alright, then try Orcs. Damn. Serpent flies? No, no one no one's playing ball with me. Well then. Okay, so there's that's where they are then. Three border guards back to back, no doubt. As your captains report the day's activities, one of them reminds you that the nearby windmill should be exploited every week. It can provide valuable resources. Thanks. Pattern obvious. No one wants to join me, not for love nor money. So interestingly, with the specialty of offense, Tarnum is basically crack hack. That's the same um, skill that he has, I'm pretty sure. Um, anywho, let's grab a city hall. Now we can actually afford it. And we actually have Monet. I do genuinely want people to join me, not just flee or fight. Her name is Yala. She entered your camp with several sheep trailing behind her, but you could tell the moment you saw her that she was no shepherd. The sword at her hip, the cautious way her eyes watch everything. She is a warrior and she drives a hard bargain when she sells the sheep to your army. Although you never deal with her directly, your eyes meet as she collects her pay. She doesn't turn away, nor does she seem impressed by your station. She winks, smiles and leaves without another word. This is the kind of barbarian woman you imagine existing in Jarg's day. Proud, wild and independent. You've heard of the bard's tales of women fighting and dying beside the men, of entire families of heroes standing up against incredible odds. Today, few women take up the sword, or dare travel alone across these rough lands. Hmm, I wonder if Tarnum's uh, got an eye for this Yala lady. Calling it now. <laughs> we shall see. Gubbins. Just gonna keep going to some like out the way for the most part. Like here or something. Very lovely. Okay, I'll take that. To be fair, I'll take that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Uh, castle for sure. We need to get ourselves a capital. Key master tent there. Yep, definitely take that.
Um. Nah. We need to lose all that. Yeah, that's a better trade for us, I think. Um, what do we want here? A wolf pen, really. Ooh, hello. I'm not very strong. We're at the point where we're looking to sustain from. Oh, I didn't realise it was. Never mind. Actually, to be fair, that's okay. In a wolf pen, anyway. Um, yeah, you know, I will. I will. Gonna be a tough fight actually. Goblins travel further. Much better trade. Oh no, let's put him in there. Once again, Yala enters your camp. This time she has information to sell, so you arrange for her to meet you alone in your tent. She tells you the fighting in the Mudlands is fierce, but primarily between three sides. Melanda the Witch flies an orange flag, Wystan the Lizardman has a blue flag, and finally the Knoll Alkin wears red. All are devious opponents, but thankfully their hatred is directed at each other for the moment. Yala's information comes at a high price, but at least you get to talk to her for a while. When you ask her what clan she's from, she frowns and her eyes go cold. I'm clanless, she says. Clanless ever since we stood up to the wizards. The men died fighting. My mother and the other mothers of the clan weren't so lucky when the wizards decided to punish us as well. Join me. I have all the clans behind me. Join my army and you'll have your revenge, I promise. No clan would help us then, so I don't ask for their help now. Yala leaves. Her mood suddenly dark. Mm. Tarnum's definitely got a soft spot for this Yala lady, that's for sure. Curious to see how that relationship develops throughout this uh, campaign.
Oh, actually, I don't think he's visited that. I actually rate Cyclops over Behemoths for the most part. Normal Behemoths, I mean once you get Ancients true, sure they're pretty good, but I don't know. This early on in the game I'd just rather have a couple of Cyclops than a couple of Bayos. Call me crazy, but it is what it is. So we've got two tents now, yeah? We need red still, so it's probably up. Mm. Oh, unless the lands are all split, which would also be quite interesting. Hmm. I wonder if that is the case. Now well, they'd have to be joined. Surely, if they're all at war with each other. My lord, my lord, shouts the senile old goblin who has made himself your advisor. Yes, sir, uh, what's your name, you reply? I just made an amazing discovery, says the goblin without answering. I climbed to the top of Redwood Tree and boy, could I see far. You know what? You could use that. Yeah, to keep an eye on your enemy. And then the crazy old goblin staggers away. <laughs> that goblin's brilliant. Hero of the show? Probably, probably. Who needs Tarnum when you got that little goblin? Just gonna grab. Oh, I can't even afford a match level one. Rip. Probably should have checked what his army was in hindsight. Oh, I thought that. Got five G's coming in. Uh, wait one more time. Actually, there's a thing there. Let's just go. Wow. Yoink. Loving to see it. <laughs> he can't get to me, so very good luck today. I need to go back and deal with him. Uh, I suppose I do. Hmm. Now it's anyone's guess where this place might be. Shoot, run out of movement. No! <laughs> oh shit! Oh well. I think I could have, probably could have got there, to be fair, if I just played that smarter. Eh. Well, whatever. This guy's weak source. Cyclops King in disguise! <laughs> With his two shots.
Wow. That's unfortunate. Do I push on or do I take the victory and go back? You find yourself distracted each night when you pitch camp, waiting and hoping for the beautiful barbarian woman Yala to arrive. She's been fighting the wizards longer than you have and you sense in her a connection, as if she knows you better than even your own friend, Hardak. Finally, she appears trying to sell more goods stolen from Brakadun, so you invite her to share your meal. Over mead and mutton, you talk late into the night about your dream of restoring your people to the glory of their past. I want to give our people strength, so that one day every man, woman and child would rather die than bow their head in shame, you say. A day when men would rather work than sit around the lodge drinking and complaining about their lot in life, Yala adds bitterly. That would be nice. So these guys aren't out, which is interesting. When you wake this morning, Yala is gone. This time, she didn't give you the opportunity to ask her to stay. Although you understand why she fights alone, you wish she would trust you enough to stand at your side. Together, the two of you could accomplish so much, maybe even destroy the entire empire of Brakadun. Imagine a barbarian king ruling the world from ocean to ocean like in Yarg's day, but you realise that it is no longer just your dream. It's a goal that you now share with the warrior woman, Yala. You know, it's funny, I actually, uh, I'm actually rooting for these, uh, these two to end up a couple by the end of this campaign. <laughs> Genuinely wanted to see how this, um... This story ends. What's the max level? 18. Yeah, okay. Well, I've got one level left to grab then. Came around quickly. Ah, there's another base. Ah, you sneaky, sneaky snake. You're summoned to the well-guarded carts where you keep your gold, finding a distraught Hardak placing his hand into one of the sack. His hand comes out and he scatters what looks like rusty pieces of iron on the ground. What's this, you say? Apparently, my king, some of the gold you've collected was fake. Perhaps some kind of magic had been placed on it, Hardak says. How much of it, you ask? I don't know, but I'll check. Not a lot, really, in the grand scheme. What? No chance we lose all that to one knoll. Alright. Let's get this army over to my boy. And see who this is. This Alkin, this is one of the guys I said about. It's not that big an army. Even top scale of that, I think we'd be okay dealing with that. Not even waiting around in base, interestingly.
Noble sacrifice for the greater good. Wow. Oh, shackles of war. That makes so much sense as to why you didn't retreat then. Red's out. I wonder if we forced um, blue to attack red when we did that. I wonder if there's a teleporter up there. Let's just get a cheeky hero just to have a cheeky gander. So I'm curious where the hell he came from. Your troops become bogged down in a particular muddy portion of the swamp. One man almost drowns in quicksand. You quickly organise your troops, cut down nearby trees and use them as your makeshift walkway through the section. Today you've learned something about commanding your troops in the swamp. They don't call it mudlands for nothing. Not as fool who I wanted to see 3.5 KXP go on to. We'll have to get rid of her, I think, so that she doesn't replace um, Gernison. Your most trusted advisor, Hardak, approaches with a sour expression on his face. Why do you never bring good news, you joke? At least I'm not the old goblin, Hardak replies. After a shared laugh, Hardak says, After that instant with the rusting gold, we'll be needing more money, my king. I suggest you sell any surplus resources, you know, sulfur or gems or something, at the marketplace. We may not get a fair trade, but at least it's gold. I'm actually good for gold, thank you. Ah, oh, that's kind of funny. Right. Maybe he gets a Lizardman army. And then we have two people doing doing the job. I guess he could go for a mixed army, I suppose. The barbarian woman Yala returns, but this time she brings a band of escaped criminals willing to join your cause. All that she asks in return is a finder's fee. The two of you find a private spot where you spend an hour sparring, each dealing the other a couple of minor cuts. Yala is a fierce competitor, something else you like about her. As the two of you rest, you ask her what she does when she's not helping your army. Kicking her heavy boots off, she places her bare feet in your lap for a massage. Basically, I'm a thorn, Yala says. I make it my business to be a constant pain in the backside of Bracadoon. So am I, you say regretting the moment when she will leave again. How can you get her to stay? Nice, some good troops. Eh, nowhere for them to go unfortunately. Oh, there isn't anything. He was just hanging there, like a weirdo. Okay. Fair enough, I guess. Well then, do we have the red? I don't think we've got the red, do we? Definitely not in our territory. Ah, it's probably over there. But also we're already in the land now, so maybe we don't even need to. You've enjoyed another day with the barbarian woman, Yala, and couldn't be happier. But as she mounts to leave, you place a hand on her knee. 
Stay, you ask softly. I hate it when you leave. She smirks down at you, combs her fingers through your long hair. But it makes it so much better when I come back. You can wait a couple of days. Kings don't get everything they want, you know. And with that, she rides off. That's pretty cute. Ah, so hoping they would join. Uh, let's go down here next. Get leadership with him. Maybe I'll use him just so that he can gain some XP. I've already maxed out with the other one. Bad shout for the guy. Ooh, that is an artifact and a half. Let me just make sure we've got enough movement because that's Dim Door. Well, so much for not having spells, boys. It just always happens. It's just, what can I say? I attract fun spells. <laughs> What am I doing? Why are you there? Uh, whatever. Wow. Even hasted their slower. Well, I guess of all the things I could lose, I suppose that's probably one of the things I care least about. Look what we found, boys. On the cheap, but I love it. This pass leads into dangerous ravines known to be the home of murderers and hideous creatures. Few dare to travel it, and far fewer manage to get through alive. Ooh, that's massive. Genuinely massive. Holy shit. Now oh, that's GG's boys. There ain't no army that's going to stop this now. That is rather hilarious though. I'm just going to level this guy up a little bit. I feel like he needs it. Dun, da, 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 da. Right, one more day and then we're off skis again. Does he still have ogres on him? Yeah, he does. Nice. Drink. Can he take out lots of monks? Not much. Stand back! A mad woman lives beyond this point, and it is our solemn vow not to let anyone pass. Oh, nice, good job, buddy. Ah, yes, I was expecting someone, but not you. The bones said a kind warrior would visit. Oh well, somewhere among all this mess I have in my possession the tunic of the Cyclops King. Might prove useful for the battles ahead. Bring to me the ring of life, and it is yours. No idea where the Ring of Life is. Where do we go? There's a land up there. We 
use fly and just Where's here the last time Yala visited she promised to return in a few days it's been nine you've grown so concerned that you order four scouts to depart in four different directions in search of the barbarian woman oh no don't let that be the end of the love story it cannot be it can't be captain That's Miranda, I think, probably. Oh, yeah, I might as well grab them. Sure. Ah, well, there's Merist. Hello. Goodbye. Wow. That looks pretty one sided. I'm not even going to bother moving my troops around for this one. Oh, I got implosion. <laughs> Never thought you'd see a barbarian with implosion, eh? Well, today is the day. All thanks to a silly looking hat that's legit good. <laughs> What's great is they can't surrender because of um, the shackles. I don't even have to worry about them leaving. Beautiful. I don't know why I even accepted that as a trade, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Um, Let's... Go dim door here. Fly. Okay. All right, GG's boys. Congratulations, all your enemies have been defeated and victory is yours.